guys, it's Sarah from Rogue Book Woman, and I'm here to do my Owls TBR. It's a little late, but I decided to start a booktube on Sunday. <laughs> so, you know. And the Owls are a month-long readathon that happens in April that's hosted by Book Roast, which the idea is you kind of sit your owls like they do in the Harry Potter world. And so to celebrate that, I'm wearing my Hogwarts shirt and my green sweater because I've got to represent my Slytherins. And I kind of wanted to go through my book, my TBR. This is the f this is the first time I'm actually going to be participating, and I could not be more I couldn't be more excited sound a little bit like Chandler Bing there, but I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> and I, I just, I, I just want to get going. Um, and so first things first, the career choice that I decided to go with was the Spellmaker. It feels like, because I was very torn between that and the Curse Breaker, but the way my mind works, I thought logically I should learn to be a spellmaker first before I learn how to be a curse breaker. I took this very seriously. So the spellmaker has seven owls that you have to sit for and they are ancient runes, arithmancy, astronomy, charms, divination, history of magic, and transfiguration. And like each of those classes or owls correspond with a specific prompt. I also really want to add the merpeople linguistics extra seminar because I have studied language and literature and writing for many many years and it kind of feels like it's like a fun little nod to my real life and so that would add an additional owl which would be the herbology owl. And because I just like to add a lot more work for myself, I think I'm also going to add the Animagus training, which would only add one additional owl for sure, um, even though there's three owls you have to sit for. So the three for the Animagus training are Arithmancy, Potions, and Transfiguration, but since in the Spellmaker career path, Arithmancy and Transfiguration are also are already included. I wouldn't have to read a second book for those. I would only need to add a book for the Potions Owl. I might try to add an extra two books, depending on how I'm doing. But first and foremost, I need to focus on my Spellmaker Owls. And so the first book I want to read is A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and that would fit my Transfiguration Owl, which is um, an Animagus lecture, and it's to read something that includes shapeshifting. Um, then I also would like to read um, A Heart So Fierce and Lonely, which is the sequel, which would fit my Ancient Ruins owl, which we're focusing on the heart ruin, which means your book must have a heart on the cover or in the title. And then you have the Arithmancy owl, which is the balance and opposites, which is to read something outside your favorite genre. And so I thought I would read um, The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. It's the summary which is not on the back of the book, <laughs> appears to be a thriller. So I can't tell you what it's about. So we'll find out how I feel about this book as I go on. But it's definitely outside my genres, which are, my favorite genres are fantasy, historical fiction, and romance, um, specifically historical romance. So contemporary thriller, not really my genre, but I'm excited to give it a try. We'll see. <laughs> My next owl is astronomy, which is night classes, and that's to read something when it's dark outside. And so I chose Someone to Love because it's a romance novel, and I, I, do, I do love historical romance novels. I find them just very fun and soothing. I like knowing that I'm going to get a happy ending, and I thought it would be the perfect book to read at night when I might be drifting off to sleep because I go to bed fairly early. And also, this poor book has been sitting on my nightstand since February and I have only put a bookmark in it. I have not touched it since then. And so I feel like it's time to just give it a read. My next owl would be the Charms Owl, which is the Lumos Maxima, which is to read something with a white cover. And like so many people I've seen in the discourse, in the Discord and the owl's like recommendation is the uh, is A Darker Shade of Magic, which I've had for since it was a new release, I've had this book on my shelf since it was first published. I haven't read it yet. So, 
my next book is for the divination owl and that was the prompt was the third eye which was basically to randomly assign numbers to books in your tbr and then pick a random number i googled like pick a number one through ten and google picked seven and the book that was there was the incendiaries so this is going to be my divination book uh, the last book I have to read is for my History of Magic Owl, which the seminar is on witch hunters, so that means I have to read something with witches or wizards wizards in it. I don't know why I can't say that word. That was like my seventh take of saying those two words together. I do not know what's going on with me. Maybe I'm tired. And so I decided to read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, I'm currently in the middle of a Harry Potter reread, my first Harry Potter reread in over 10 years. I have not reread the entire series, I don't think ever. I honestly don't think I've read Deathly Hollows more than once, but if it was twice, I have no memory of it. Um, sorry, my hair was doing a weird, my hair was doing a weird thing. Um, and so I'm reading this book as my History of Magic Owl. Now, for those of you who've been paying attention, that's seven books already that I have to read to get my spellmaker, and the total pages is already 3,141, which roughly totals out to 105 pages a day. And I thought, that totally seems doable. Let me add more. So then I'm moving on to my additional seminar, which is the Mer People Linguistics, um, which would only add one more book, and I would need the Herbology Owl for it. Um, and the prompt for the herbology is to read something that starts with M, and so I thought I would try My Dark Vanessa. I have heard good things about it, I have heard good things about it, and I am excited to give it a shot, but I am a little bit nervous about it. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> we will see, but I, I'm excited to give that a whirl. So then that brings my total of books up to eight and my total pages up to 3,525, which totals out to 118 pages a day. Again, in my brain I think, that's nothing! Especially since I'm basically going to be in quarantine at least until the end of April. And since I think I have nothing but time still, I thought I would add the Animagus training. Um, and like I said sort of at the beginning, with the Animagus training there are three owls I have to sit for. Um, potions, Arithmacy, and Transfiguration, but since Arithmacy and Transfiguration are already covered in my Spellmaker Owl, um, I really only need to read my Potions selection, and for the Potions Owl, it's the Shrinking Solution, and to read a book under 150 pages, if I'm going to add any extra book, I feel like adding one that's under 150 pages feels like the best. And so I chose the Castle of Toronto, which I've never read, but I've had for a very long time and I've because I recently um, at the end of last year started getting really into gothic fiction and gothic romance and so this was one of the books that they were everybody said you have to read and it is only 80 it's my copy is 82 pages 82 pages it's at least a short read if I read all nine of those it's about 3,645 pages but so then I thought I would pick two books for the additional owls, like if I get through everything else and I still have time, then I can read these, but we'll see. And so for an additional arithmetic owl, which was again to read something outside your favorite genre, I thought I might try Red, White, and Royal Blue. I have heard varying degrees over this book on whether it's good or bad or fine. Um, and while it's a romance novel, it's outside my genre of historical romance. I do want to give this a try, but especially considering it's not in my favorite genre and I'm not sure how I'm going to like it, I'm also not incredibly pressed to read it just yet. So if I don't get to it, I'm not going to be devastated. The final book on my TBR, which again is a potential, is for the second Transfiguration Owl I would sit for, which would be an Animagus Lectures, to read something that includes shapeshifting, and I thought I would try this Serafina novel. Um, one of my friends read it and said that she really liked it, and I liked the idea of the court intrigue. Um, this might be one, I probably would read this before Red, White, and Royal Blue if I got that far, because um, it's more in my wheelhouse, but we'll see. 
So there you have it everyone. My total of books, if I read them all, would be 11 books at 4,565 pages. The one that I'm most worried about, ironically, is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix because it's not my favorite Harry Potter book and I, every time I think I want to reread the series I remember that I don't like that, I don't like that book and I don't reread it and so there's, there's a part of me that's already a little hesitant um, but I am excited to try and I've been enjoying my reread so far of the Harry Potter series. I might, I might actually do a little you know, series of videos of kind of like rereading the books 10 years later, like what it feels like, what I'm noticing, what I liked, what I don't like. Um, so let me know in the comments below if that's something anyone might be interested in. Otherwise, I will hopefully see you guys for the owls and uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye!